What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Ninja Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hennessy, joined tonight by Brandon Kramer, hashtag shut up Brandon, and Sean Petrucci. How are we doing tonight, boys? We're doing great. Fantastic. You know who's doing great? The San Diego Padres. First of all, I mean, past, I mean, in the span of 24 hours, they get you, Darvish, and Blake Snell. In the past year, they've gotten Clevenger, Snell, Darvish. Unreal. You got to clap oh, it up. Clap and it up. I'm sure they kept like majority of their top prospects. Too. Yeah, they, they still have, uh, I think, four out of six. Four out of six. Yeah, crazy. Um, but yeah, on the flip side of things, uh, the Cubs are apparently undergoing a fire sale. Traded away Darvish, uh, released Schwarber a while ago. Looking to trade Contreras. However, there's one name that I think the Yankees could capitalize on, and that's Kyle Hendricks. I'll preface this by saying Kyle Hendricks is an absolute stud. I think he's one of the most low-key, very good pitchers in the league. I'm not going to say elite. I'm not going to put him at the elite level, but if he had a little bit more of a personality, he'd probably be at that elite level. But, yeah, I I would characterize him as your typical Yankee. He steps on the mound, does what he has to do, and goes home. Um, you're not going to get any like the Trevor Bauer uh, theatrics from him. And I think the Yankees like that. Um, yeah, insane, yeah. lo- looking at his stats, um, he's never had a higher ERA than four in his career. He's never had a four ERA in a season. And we're just to just to state, we're not jinxing it. We're just reading what the stats show. Just reading the stats. Reading. We're just we're just reading you might what jinx it by saying say. you're not jinxing it. No, I mean I'm just saying that just to show like this dude's a beacon of consistency. I mean, oh, yeah, along yeah. with that, the consistent like below four ERA, bro. The dude, I'm not trying to jinx this either. But COVID <laughs> aside, this COVID season aside, he's only had one season in his career where he made less than 30 starts, and that's and I think he made 24. That's what, that's that, what the Yankees need. I think that's oh. when he had blisters, which is like, and it's, it's not sick. like he's throwing hard. He's not throwing upper nineties. He's throwing low, he's barely 90s, throwing mid eighties. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so like the bottom line of what I'm trying to say here is, looking at the Yankees, the current state of the rotation, uh, they could desperately, desperately use a guy like Kyle Hendricks. Um, I think if the Yankees plan on moving from Masahiro Tanaka, I would love to have both of them in the rotation together. But if they're looking to replace Tanaka, I think Kyle Hendricks is the perfect guy for that. So, Brandon, let me know what you think about Hendricks. It would be a great – it needs to happen. I mean, by looking at what the Padres had to give up to get Darvish, it didn't seem like it was that much. Yes, the yeah. Padres are eating a lot of that money. Um, but, I mean, if they're going on a full fire sale but they want MLB-ready talent, that's something that the Yankees have. They either have prospects that are a year or two away or they have guys that can be playing right now. I mean – Hendricks is their best pitcher, so it would take. I would say actually now their second best pitcher would take a little bit more, but you definitely have the the talent to do it. I mean, you can get him without giving up Clint Frazier or Clark Schmidt or David Garcia easily. I mean, you could yeah, probably do it with so. like a honestly with all with the rumors that all teams really like Mike Totman. I mean, you could probably headline the trade with Mike Totman. He's a guy that the Cubs can plug in to their outfield opening day and throw in like an arm or two, and then. There you go. Yeah, I mean, the key with that is, could you imagine if Talkman actually didn't suck this past season? Yeah. The Yankees easily could have dealt him for Hendricks. Like, he would be the main, the main has, piece. He, he still has a lot of value. Now, since he had, like, he's coming off an awful season where people are calling him a fluke, Um, I think it would take Talkman. I don't even know if Talkman would be able to be the centerpiece in that deal. No, um, But not. he would definitely have to be involved. But, Sean, what do you think? I mean, who do you think the Yankees would have to give up in order to get Hendricks? It's tough to say. I think maybe like the middle kind of prospect arms, like maybe like an Abreu or like a Hill or you hurry or whatever. I think an arm like that, like like Brandon said, it's not going to take Devi or yeah. Clark, Clint, Jason, obviously. So like that's why I think the Yankees should do it. It yeah. doesn't hurt them now. It only helps. It's Consistency is obviously what this team needs. So yeah, I mean, I don't think we know what the Cubs are actually doing. Are they going on a full fire sale or are they just cutting? I just they might as well. They might as no. well. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, 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 I assume so. Just make the call. So. They want to do it. Yeah. I mean, looking at the Cubs roster right now, I mean, we know that uh, based off of this season, when they got eliminated by the Marlins, um, I think we know that this roster, the way they had it composed was not winning anything. Um, and now that Quintana's a free agent, I believe um, Schwarber's gone. I don't even be surprised if they trade a guy like Chris Bryant. I mean, I know he's coming off an awful season and they won't get that much for him, but guys like Bryant, Rizzo, I could definitely see them on the trade block. Um, that leads me to believe that Hendricks is going to be thrown around there. Um, Hendricks' contract is not bad at all. And it would be something that the 
Cubs would want to trade. He's getting 14 million next year, 14 million the year after that, then 16 million. Yeah, I mean mid 30s. That's perfect. That's let, me give, let me give let me give you guys good. my hypothetical trade package for Kyle Hendricks. Right? Trade suggestion. Trade suggestion. Okay. It's a trade suggestion. Um, I'm starting it off. I think I'm gonna center that deal around Jonathan Loisaga. I think the Cubs might want him. I mean, he's a bit of a project. I think they have time to work on him, and he has potential. Um, second, I'm throwing Talkman in that deal. I think it's fair. I think they want him. Especially, I mean, he's the perfect replacement for Schwarber. Um, and I think I'm capping that deal off with like a minorly infielder. I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the Yankees send him back, to the, back to the Cubs. Send him back but to the Cubs. I could see a guy maybe like um, like Kyle Holder. I don't know if he's still in the organization, but I could definitely see him. I love he got no, picked no. in the Rule Five. He got picked in the Rule Five right? draft. Yeah. All right, well, someone in like that Kyle Holder range, who's like a double A, triple A middle infielder, yeah. I could definitely see those well, three guys. That probably gets you uh, Kyle Hendricks, and I'd make that deal ten times. I'd probably time. center around Chris. Gittin. I think Cashman would jump on that. Oh, easily, easily, all over it. But I wonder if the Cubs would be looking for more because I think that we would think be they'd say point. eat up. They would say eat up some of the money, and I think the Yankees would do that. The Yankees would do it. Yeah, that's not even that much money. Eat they'd up the it. money for who? Hendrick. They would say that they don't want to like eat up most of the money for the trade. Oh, the Yankees would easily Yankees would do it. That yeah. that because, you can get away with not giving up as many good prospects. You're like, okay, we'll eat like three quarters to almost. But all But like money. you said, what, what's his contract? Fourteen million next year. Fourteen million That's and then sixteen million. It's not even going to be a conversation about eating the money. I think. I think the Yankees are just going to they just going to no, take I, it. I think what it's going to come down to is what the Cubs are looking for because the package That's that I just suggested. Personally, I think the Cubs might be looking for a little bit more. Um, They're looking for more offense, so maybe Talkman yeah. isn't a guy that they want. Because think about it, they already have Hayward, and he's yeah, more of a defensive way, guy. I, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd throw Andujar in there instead of Talkman if he came down to it. I, I maybe if, if, they, if that's what they attempt. want over, then yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, Andujar would be interesting because you know the bat is there. Like yeah. he, he's shown that he has the talent with the bat. He, he can't hit. I think. I feel like this trade would be ideal. Like, let's say whenever we find out if the NL the NL has a DH, then you're starting to be like, okay. I feel like if there's the NL, uh, the DH in the NL, Andujar is going to have a lot more value because then not, you don't have to trade him specifically to an AL team. You can yep. trade him all around the league because I, I just don't see this guy doing well even in the outfield because, I mean – I don't care if he's catching routine fly balls. I still have nightmares of when he let that ball go by him against Boston. Like that, yeah. that's no. Yeah, no, no I know. Yeah. And I mean, looking at the Yankees, like starting rotation options uh, going into next season, I'm looking at this rotation and they desperately need a guy like Hendricks. Um, but can you imagine going into the postseason next year and your one, two, three is Cole uh, Hendricks Tanaka. I think that that's more Cole than could be also good. Severino. But yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm I don't want to trust. Uh, yeah, I don't want to trust. Yeah, I'm, 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 we're just, get. Yeah. I'm not saying Sevy's name only because I want to see what he does when he comes back first. I, I'm yeah. not considering him uh, a certainty at all for next season. Yeah, don't honestly don't bet. If, if we've just this is not me also being a doctor. This is just me looking at what MLB players <laughs> oh, have done. Go. Um, you've just seen this with MLB players. Normally, when a guy comes back from Tommy John, let's say he has it in the year before in February. Normally, they come back around August or September, and they're dog shit. Case yeah. in point, Jordan Montgomery. But then the next year after that, they finally start getting used to throwing and everything. Um, so I don't think – I mean, could we see Severino? Let's say we, let's say when we make the playoffs next year. Could we see Severino maybe in like a bullpen role? Yeah, you could oh, see him like right. that. But in terms of starting on the mound, I don't – no one should expect because they're going to take their time with yeah. him because he's their – besides Cole, like he's their young ace. Or not yeah, ace, he, ace. He but, can come in in like an opener role, like a piggyback. On top but also, I do think having Garrett Cole on the team is really going to benefit Luis Severino in, in the long run. Because if you think about it, the Yankees didn't really have a fireball, or a fireball guy like him on the team. No one to teach him like, okay, don't throw your damn arm out. Now that you have Cole, a guy that is still throwing 100, 100 miles an hour towards the end of his outings, gives you a lot of opportunity for him to learn. I mean, CC learned off of Pettit how to throw a cutter. That saved his career. You never know. These little teachings can go a long way. Yeah, I mean, before we wrap things up tonight um, and wrap wrap up the whole Hendrix talk, um, I'm going to give you guys a proposition. You're going to tell me which route you would go down. I'm assuming the money's going to be the same hypothetically on, on both sides. Would you rather go option A and sign Trevor Bauer? 
or option B, trade for Kyle Hendricks and sign back Tanaka. Where is where does DJ uh, come into play with this? DJ, he has nothing to do with any of this. Um, well, it just comes down to these three players. Would you prefer one Bauer or Hendricks and Tanaka? Bauer. Bauer. Hundred percent. Right. Because yeah. because then let, let's say let's say you bank That's on Severino eight. actually turning out to be back to himself. Then you actually have, and let's say Devi turns out to be like a two, three, maybe even a four starter. Then you have a rotation of three potential aces and a really good pitcher at number four. I mean, yeah. that because with Tanaka, you're also banking on his arm is starting to slow down a bit. You never know when that elbow is going to give out. I still think it's incredible how it hasn't. Um, and then you have with Hendricks, still would love Hendricks. I think we could all come to an agreement that Kyle Hendricks belongs on the Yankees. Yes, um, obviously, I, I think we all prefer a guy like Trevor Bauer over him. But mm-hmm. right now, we, we're assuming that he's completely out of the question. I have a bold being realistic. Being Actually, real I wouldn't up. call this a bold prediction, but I'm going to change my Bauer where he's going to sign. I think the Dodgers are going to overpay for Trevor Bauer. Because, I I th- see it. because and here's the thing. If the Dodgers overpay for Trevor Bauer, they are going to be – I wouldn't say they would be fucked, but they're going to run into some issues – where they're going to be like, oh, fuck, we got to pay someone and we're already paying back. Because, I mean, you look at the Padres rotation, let's say not this year, but next year. Bauer, or not Bauer, uh, Clevenger, Snell, Darvish, Lamette, and then potentially Mackenzie Gore. Yeah. No that, one's here. And then you look at the Dodgers, you got how long is Kershaw's arm going to hold up? You have Bueller, you have Dustin May, but then you're like, can you rely on other people? So I could see them going like, you know what? We need to get this done. Overpay for Trevor Bauer. No, I, I could definitely see that them kind of kind of getting nervous with the moves the Padres yeah, are yeah. making. It's like a panic signing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Wait, that's gonna wrap- did, did you see the uh, the Rays are still doing a fire show? They traded host, one of their best relievers, actually. I saw that. Oh, to, Philly, to Philly. To Philly. Please, just yeah. I, if, if, if He's not even he, like, isn't he like a second or third year player? He's not even like... I know he yeah. was. He was. He has. He has nasty stuff. Well, no, no, he was, that's Castillo. Year. That's Castillo. Never mind. Yeah, Cast. Um. So if if the Rays are going to trade someone, uh, just uh, trade Nick Anderson to <laughs> a team that the Yankees don't face at any point in the year, or um, trade him to trade Washington. The Yankees. Trade, All right. Trade him to my. Trade him back to Miami. That's going to wrap things up for us tonight. Now, uh, be sure to follow. Be sure to like. Be sure to comment. Be sure to subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. Um, follow us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Unhinged New York too. Streaming on there a lot more often than we have been, uh, but we still live stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday night. We got trivia tonight, uh, 10 p.m. Stay tuned on our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter page for that. Uh, Appreciate all you guys. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.